Good morning. Yes. That's funny. Well, good morning, everybody. I'm Jeff Harris. I work here locally at NASA Langley Research Center. And today I get to talk with you about Mars and the challenges of safely and affordably getting humans to the surface of Mars. So first I want to start with an image. Does anybody see anything there that you recognize? Yeah. Yell it out. All right, so you got the moon. And if you can see a little bit further down, there's this tiny little red dot. That is what Mars looks like in our night sky from here at Earth. And in fact, you know, from the earliest days when humans could first look at the sky, they noticed this strange red light that moved a little differently than the other stars. And so we've been looking at Mars and wondering about Mars for an awful long time. And as we move forward, we develop new technologies such as telescopes, and we're able to look at and see Mars in a lot more detail. And in fact, over time, if you look at the history of observing Mars, you have people in the 1600s uh, able to determine that Mars had polar ice caps. You had uh, um, also those early observations, they were able to determine the inclination of Mars or the tilt of its rotation. And then you get into the 1800s, in the late 1800s, and they could see more surface features. And they, they determined that these were canals that were built by an intelligent species on a dying world. And that was in 1894. This was, this was the thinking at the time. Now, of course, now we know that that's not actually the case. But Mars really is a very interesting place to study. So Mars is the fourth rock from our sun and is named after the Roman god of war. Mars is half the diameter of Earth, but twice the diameter of Earth's moon. And in fact, if you look at the land mass of Earth, you know, took out all the oceans, it's about the same size as Mars. And like Earth, Mars has seasons. Uh, it has polar ice caps, it has volcanoes, it has canyons, it has deserts, and weather. So Curiosity is really the monster truck of rovers. If you look here, these are the rovers that we've sent to Mars. Our very first one here with Pathfinder, and then the Mars Exploration Rovers, and then the Mars Science Laboratory at about one metric ton. And that one metric ton represents the limits of our current entry, descent, and landing capabilities. So, this rover is the biggest thing that we know currently how to put down on the surface of Mars. We've had seven successful landers, and we've had eight that have failed. So let's start talking about what it takes first to how do we get to up there. We have our vehicle packaged in it, we launch, we accelerate. After we get out of Earth's atmosphere, we drop the fairing, we now get up into orbit, we check our orbit, and then we ignite the engine again to accelerate ourselves to uh, escape velocity and get us on the right trajectory headed to Mars. And that's when we move from the leaving Earth into what we call the cruise phase. So we go from launch and departure to the cruise phase. And the cruise is where we are uh, traveling from the Earth vicinity to the Mars vicinity. And now I have a short video here that describes how we do that. How do you get to Mars? If you want to send a spacecraft all the way to Mars, first you'll need a fast rocket to escape the pull of Earth's gravity. The heavier your spacecraft, the more powerful your rocket needs to be to lift off. Next, make sure you launch at the right time. Mars and Earth orbit the Sun at different speeds and distances. Sometimes they're really far apart, and other times they come closer together. About every two years, the two planets are in perfect positions to get to Mars with the least amount of rocket fuel. That's important. The total trip is over 300 million miles. Finally, make sure your aim is right. You can't shoot for where Mars is at launch time. You have to aim for where it will be when you get there. It's a lot like how a quarterback passes a football. Also, you may need a few thrusts to correct your direction along the way so you don't miss Mars. If all goes well, you'll get to the red planet in about seven or eight months. So here we are. We've, we've, we've gone from Earth to Mars. We've arrived at Mars. And this is what the planet looks like as we get there. And we're getting ready for entry, descent, and landing. Now, here we've arrived at Mars. This is what it looks like as we're uh, starting to get pulled into Mars gravity well. It's accelerating the vehicle toward Mars. Um, and so we're ready to start entry, descent, and landing. But what really is entry, descent, and landing? And so it is, entry, descent, and landing is about the controlled flight of the vehicle system through all appreciable atmospheres, including the, sa including the safe landing where that's applicable. So let's take a quick look at what the entry, descent, and landing sequence at Mars looks like. So let's take a quick look at how the sort of the history of entry, descent, and landing at Mars. I mentioned the Viking mission. So Viking sent two probes to Mars. They were landers. 
they entered with a rigid 70 degree sphere cone aeroshell and went and had a supersonic parachute to a propulsive descent on the surface. Now this was all possible. This was the first landings at Mars, right? So this was all possible because of the significant uh, technology development activities we had in the 60s and 70s. Those activities made it possible for us to understand the 70 degree sphere cone aeroshell and how that was going to fly. It qualified this disk gap band supersonic parachute so that we would be able to use that, as well as the autonomous propulsive landing. So if we look at some of the more recent missions, Mars Pathfinder, it landed a small rover there, used airbags, and I'll show you that in just a second. Mars Polar Lander was another lander sort of like uh, the Viking Air, but we lost that one. We don't know exactly why, but through the mishap investigation, the most likely scenario was that um, its, its computer was listening to its touchdown sensor too early. So it's, this touchdown sensor is looking for a shock to hit, when it touches down on the surface to turn off its landing engines. And so what most likely happened is it's listening to that too early, and then it deployed its landing legs and shocked the system, and the little sensor thought it had touched down, it turned off the engines, and most likely fell the last 60 meters to the surface. So we then did the Mars Exploration rovers, and so let's, let's take a look at their EDL architecture. So again, we have the 70 degree sphere cone, aeroshell, to separate from the crew stage, and we're coming straight in to, or ballistically, into the Mars uh, atmosphere. So that heat shield protecting us from the air heating, going through peak heating and now peak deceleration. And as we get down closer to Mach 2, we can deploy that supersonic parachute. And now this, we're still flying relatively horizontally at this point, but the parachute, that's loud. The parachute is actually working on slowing us down and sort of tipping us over. And then we can drop the heat shield, right? And then here's where it's different than what we saw before. It has the payload in this tetrahedron hanging down below. And that tetrahedron has airbags all around it, which will inflate as we get a little closer to the surface. And so those are just like crash the airbags for your, for your crashing, right? So, and as we get within about 30 meters of the surface, these retro rockets fire, bring the entire system close to zero miles per hour relative to the surface, and then drops it. And that, that system, that airbag system, hits the surface at about 54 miles an hour, and then bounces along until it stops. Now in the actual missions, this is a simulation, but in the actual missions, they bounced about 30 times before they stopped. And then it deflates the airbags and then opens the tetrahedron and you have your payload safely on the surface of Mars. In that case, it was one of the exploration rovers. So then we had, I mentioned the Phoenix mission before, and so this is now a more uh, a modern lander but still in the same type of architecture that we did for Viking. So 70 degree sphere cone, getting through the heating, same type of supersonic parachute, going to a propulsive descent and landing, which was, which was successful. And so now the most recent one we have is the Mars Science Laboratory, uh, which was landing the Curiosity rover on the surface of Mars. So this represents the state of the art, so we'll watch how we got to the surface with MSL. So again, same type, but much larger, same type of rigid aeroshell. We'll drop the cruise stage. We now reorient this entry vehicle toward the atmosphere of Mars. We drop that balance mass. Remember, so we offset, so we'll fly at an angle of attack. And so now we start to get into the sensible atmosphere. All right, so the vehicle starts to feel deceleration. It uses rockets called a reaction control system to keep itself oriented correctly. And then here, you can see we've gone through peak heating and it's starting to steer back and forth in these S-turns, continuing to slow down. It gets through uh, peak deceleration, which again for MSL was about 10 Gs. And so now we're continuing to slow down. And as we get close to two, we kick off more mass to recenter ourselves. We don't want to be offset anymore so we can safely deploy the parachute which there's that supersonic parachute again, the same style, this gap band that we use for Viking, but much larger. So now we drop the heat shield and the radar's looking for the surface. And once it finds the surface in a solution, it's going to drop the rover and the powered descent vehicle, which is the rover's rocket pack. They fire and continue decelerating the rover relative to the surface. 
And one of the first things it does, though, is a big left turn to get away from the parachute. So it's the parachute avoidance maneuver. And so it's moved away from the parachute. Now there's radar system up front there. It's continuing to look at the surface and understand how, we, how our altitude and our velocity relative to the surface. And as we get closer, there's an instrument called the MARTI instrument. It's a camera right here that's also looking at the surface and comparing features to understand how much we're moving side to side. That's what it's doing there. And so now as we get closer to the surface, we lower the rover on the tether system below this rocket pack. And it continues decelerating very slowly toward the surface now. And the rover has set its wheels into a landing configuration. And right now, the, everything's just waiting for this, the touchdown sensor. And once it senses touchdown, it cuts those tethers. And the power descent vehicle flies away to a safe distance and crashes but a safe distance away from the rover. And one of the, the big benefits of landing this way is you've now got your rover system on the surface essentially ready to go. All it has to do is stand up its remote sensing mast and it's essentially ready to go.